I can't hear you. 5.4, long division and synthetic division. Yes, you heard right. Long division, old school, and synthetic division, fake division, huh? Let's see what those mean. All right, so this is long division. Back in the third or fourth grade, you were asked to take this number and divide. And so this is what you did. You drew a little weird box. You put the number three out here. We call that the divisor. And then you put the 4,376 in here. We call that the dividend. And then you had to follow these very specific steps. Um, you would first look at the first digit, the four, and then ask yourself how many times does the three go into the four? And um, the answer is one. So you put a one right on top of the four and then do one times three is three. And then you put that three here, subtract. I put a circle around my subtraction signs. And then just subtract. And then you would bring down the next digit, 13. And then you would ask yourself how many times this three go into 13, and that is four times. And you would put the four right above the three and do four times three is 12. Subtract, that's one again. And then you would draw a little arrow and bring down the seven. Oh, I'm gonna run out of room. How many times does three go into 17? That is five times. Three times five is 15. Subtract two, and then finally bring down this six. And then three times what gives you 26, and the closest number is eight. And then put 24 down there, subtract, and then you would have what's called a remainder two. And then you would often put that remainder two up here, so as a fraction two over three, which is the divisor. And that would be our answer. That's what we did in the fourth grade. Okay, we're going to do all of that now again, but with polynomials. How fun. All right, so here it is. I give you a polynomial, x squared minus 2x minus 8. And then I ask you to divide it with another polynomial, um, x plus 2. We would do it the same way. There is the dividend. There's the little box, devising, dividing box. And there's the divisor. All right, so we set it up the same way and we're going to do it pretty much the same way. You're going to only look at the first term, x squared. And then you're actually only gonna look at the first term out here in the divisor as well. And then you're going to ask yourself, how many times does this x go into that x squared? And the answer is, or x, x times x gives you x squared. All right. So what you're going to actually do is take that x and multiply it to the whole thing. Okay, when you do that, you get, oh, I actually wrote it in, nice. Well, if you multiply the x with the x plus two, and then you write your answer here, that's what we get, we put a little bar and then actually put a minus sign. Again, I like to put a minus sign with a circle around it. I don't know why. <clears throat> and then you just subtract. x squared minus x squared. That goes away, and that's the whole point of it. 
and then we have a negative 2x minus, be careful, that's a minus sign, so negative 2x minus 2x gives us a negative 4x. Then we do that little arrow thing, bring the negative 8 down. Let me clean this up just a little bit. And then we ask ourselves, what times x will give us negative 4x? And it turns out it is a negative 4. So that's where I put my negative 4. Now only take the negative 4 and multiply it with this whole thing to get negative 4x minus 8. Put the little bar, put a big minus sign with a circle around it. Um, when that happens, a negative 4x minus a negative 4x goes away. And then a negative 8 minus 8 gives us a remainder of zero. And so there's our answer up here. When you divide those two polynomials, we have x minus 4. All right, that process is confusing, um, but it's the same process we learned in the third grade. Let's try another one. This one says it's a little bit tricky, but the only thing tricky is, um, notice there's no x squared term. So when there's no x squared term, you're gonna have to put in a zero as a placeholder. All right. Let's draw the little box, put in the divisor, um, and then long division. How many times does x go into x to the third? <clears throat> you need, I mean, yeah, you need um, x squared times x to get x to the third. And so you're going to take the x squared and multiply it by the whole thing. That's what you get. Put a little line underneath it. Put a big minus sign in front, circle it. Sometimes it helps if you put this in parentheses. <clears throat> okay, so when you do that and you subtract, you really have to be careful when you subtract with the, the sign changes, the minus and the negative. You should get x squared. Bring down the minus 7x and then ask yourself what times x gives you x squared. And that's just x. Multiply that x with the whole thing. It gives you that. Put the little line. Subtract if it helps. Put parentheses around it. And then subtract. You should get negative 6x. Bring down that minus 6. What times? Let me erase a little bit. Um, what times x gives you a negative 6x, and it turns out it is negative 6. Take that negative 6 and multiply it with the whole thing. That's what we have. Put the line, put a big minus sign. Again, if it helps, put it around parentheses. And then you should get a remainder of 12. And then just like old school, you take that minus 12, you put it up here. Minus 12 over the divisor. All right. All right. It gets even more tricky. Let's see how. Ooh, this is trickiest. Okay, let's set it up. Mm, it's not too tricky. It's the same thing. There's our little box, there's a dividend, and then here's our divisor. Notice it doesn't have an x term in it, so I put a 0x as a placeholder. Those are kind of important. Okay, let's do it. I know it looks a lot bigger, um, but actually the process is a lot shorter. 
you have to ask yourself, what times 2x cubed gives you 2x to the fourth? And it's just an x. Multiply the whole thing by x. And that's what you get. Put a little bit of bar, a minus sign. Again, if it helps, put parentheses around the whole thing because you're going to have to subtract everything. And that's what we get. Bring down the 3. Clean up this a little bit. Then you have to ask yourself, what times 2x cubed gives you 6x cubed? And the answer is 3. So you take that 3, you multiply it with the whole thing to get that. Put a little line, clean it up just a little bit. Put a minus sign, put it around some parentheses to be nice, and then subtract. And then it turns out that we have a remainder zero. Okay, so that's just good. Practicing a lot of long division. Um, this one was only tricky because we needed also a placeholder um, out here as well. So sometimes you need a placeholder on the inside, sometimes you need a placeholder on the outside. But, and then you also have to, oh, and that, you have to list them in standard form, so from greatest to least. All right, let's see what we have next. Factors. So the next part of the homework is going to ask you to determine if this is going to be a factor of this. So basically, are, are they going to factor out in parentheses nicely? All right, so we would do the same thing. We would um, set it up. Oh, this one has two placeholders. There's an x0, and then there's a 0x out here too. So you could have two placeholders. OK. What times x squared gives you? 3x to the fourth. It is 3x squared. Multiply that 3x with the whole thing. Comes down here. Clean it up a little bit. Put the little bar. Minus sign. Put it in parentheses. Subtract. Bring down the next term. Uh, what times x squared gives you a negative 4x cubed? A minus 4x, take that minus 4x and multiply it with this whole thing, put it there, a little bar, clean it up just a little, put a minus sign, put it in parentheses, subtract, bring down the 5, and then what times x squared will give you 9x squared, and it is just 9. Take the 9, multiply with this whole thing, and subtract, and we have a remainder of 4. So when there is a remainder, that means this is not a factor of this. So not a factor. So we're, we're hoping for um, a remainder of zero. If it were a remainder of zero, you would be a factor. But in this case, um, x squared plus one is not a factor. There was a remainder. All right. Moving on, synthetic division. All right. Synthetic division is just another way of dividing. Um, and it's supposed to be a faster, quicker way, and it really is a faster, quicker way. So let's see how that works. Let's go ahead and divide those. All right. Normally, we would do the little box and then the dividend and the divisor and all that good stuff. But with synthetic division, there's a few different things. You're going to have an upside down half box. Oh, that's a little bit weird. And then you're going to take this number, the 3, not the negative 3, 
just the three, and you're going to put it in the box. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take all of these coefficients, make sure they're in order. By in order, I mean in standard form. <clears throat> and then you're going to put them there. So the 3, the negative 2, the positive 3, and the negative 4 it goes there. You're going to put a line there. First thing you're going to do, bring that first term down, just the 3. Next thing you're going to do, take the 3 that's inside the box here and multiply. When you multiply, that gives us a 9, and that's where you're going to put the 9. And then you're going to actually end up adding from here. Negative 2 plus 9, 7. Take that 3, multiply. That gives us 21. Add 24. Then multiply and add and that's actually the remainder okay how do i write this as an answer though let's clean it all up a little bit to write this as an answer you take a look at your original problem which was x to the third power you're always going to use one exponent less so there it is. x squared is one exponent less, and you're going to put the 3 in it. And the next one down is x. You're going to put the 7 next to it, and then just the 24. There it is, and there's the remainder. So there you have it, synthetic division. Let's try another one. I know that process is foreign to you. And so the more times we do it, the more times you're going to realize, oh, this is going to be a lot faster. It says tricky. Here it is. There's our little box. Remember, I'm going to put this number in, but the opposite. So it, the last example was a minus 3, and we put in a positive 3. This one is a positive 3, so we're going to put in a negative 3, a minus 3. All right. Notice these guys are not in order. You have x to the fourth and then an x to the third, and then an x squared way back here, and then an x, and then a 30. So it's written out of order. You have to rearrange that order and put it properly in order. Put in a line. First thing we do is bring down the 1. Multiply. Put it there. Add gives you a negative 2. Multiply with that gives you a 6. Add negative 5. Multiply. Add, multiply, and add. There's our remainder. It's actually remainder 0 this time. And then we're going to use these numbers as coefficients. Remember, the highest exponent was x to the fourth. So we're going to use x to the third, one less, and then minus 2x squared, and then minus 5x, and then plus 10. We use these numbers. And that is what you get when you divide. OK? One more to go. The remainder theorem. Last slide for the day. So I give you a, a, um, a function. And then I ask you to find um, p of negative 2. I ask you to take negative 2 and plug it into all of your x's. All of them. All right, and so that's what we did in Algebra 1, was you took whatever they asked you to, um, to do and plug it into all the x's and solve. Well, you can use synthetic division as well to do the same problem. And so here's how we use synthetic division. Still got the little box. This time, I'm not going to use the opposite. I'm just going to use what they want us to plug in. 
a negative 2. All right, plug all these numbers in. There's a 1 for the x to the 5th. There's no x to the 4th. That's why I put in a 0. There's a negative 2 for x to the 3rd. There's a negative 1 for x to the 2nd. There is no x alone, so I put a 0 there. And then there's just a 2. All right, let's put our little bar. Bring down the first term. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Remainder, th eight, negative 18. So it turns out that if you were to plug negative 2 into all of these x's, you should get negative 18. All right. There you have it. Regular old school division and this brand new synthetic division. Go ahead and try it on the homework.